Okay, we're now going to start looking at what type of load is an ideal load for an amplifier. And indeed, the ideal load for an amplifier would be an ideal current source. So remember, an ideal current source has infinite impedance. regardless of the voltage across it. Okay, so if we were looking at our transistor amplifier here and looking for the voltage gain, AV here would just be the intrinsic gain of the transistor minus GM times RO. And of course, this is as large a gain as we can achieve from a single transistor. So that's good. Now, we can approximate a current source with a transistor. And specifically for a MOS device, that would be a transistor in saturation. Okay, so let's examine the following two circuits. We could try a diode connected in MOS load. Diode connection means that we connect the gate to the drain. This is nice because it means that the transistor is always in saturation. Okay, if we do this, let's examine what the input resistance is. We're looking into the source of an NMOS transistor that's diode connected, and that means that the resistance looking into the transistor would just be equal to 1 over GM. If we have back gate effect, it would be 1 over GM plus GMB. We could instead, and of course uh, this would mean that the voltage gain would be equal to approximately GM of the bottom transistor divided by GM of the top transistor plus its back gate transconductance. So this isn't so high. We could instead look at a PMOS current source. This just has some V bias driving its gate. And if we look at this load resistance that this is providing, this would be the output resistance of the PMOS transistor. And our voltage gain would then be GM of the bottom transistor times the output resistance of the NMOS in parallel with the output resistance of the PMOS. Of course, this is much higher than the gain for the diode-connected load. So obviously, the PMOS transistor will give higher gain, and that's what we're looking for. We'll now look at an example of a common source with a diode load.